It's time, Dr. Guy Husa. Give him a big round of applause. <laughs> Guy is the research director for marine ecosystems and resources at the Institute of Marine Research in Norway. And Guy, you have been working with this for quite some uh, time. You're also a Norwegian delegate to the International Council for Exploration of the Sea. But I have to ask you, as I ask the others, why did you end up in the sea, Guy? Well, yeah, I, I grew up in uh, Østerwald Islands, uh, so there was a lot of sea, a lot of boat, a lot of uh, fishing when I was young. And when I was uh, in the summers, when I was little, I was spent them up in uh, north in Møre, uh, an island there. So from a very early age, you know, just uh, ifjøru, as you say in Norwegian, and uh, all day long. So I was, I was quite destined to that. And, um, I went to university and started, my plan was to go into the aquaculture business and to do a degree in that. But then I, I got a course in fisheries biology and then I shifted uh, and did a, a master then in, in fisheries biology. And I never regretted that, so yeah. And now you're gonna give us uh, an overview of the status and potential for fisheries, how to get more food like Carl said in the beginning. Floor is yours, Guy. Thank you very much. Um, Okay, so one can hardly overestimate the importance of fisheries to the historical development, societal development of Norway. The basis for the fisheries is threefold. And firstly, Norway is geographically well placed, down current to the uh, warm uh, Gulf Stream, um, and our long rugged coast and our nearby seas are ideal spawning habitat and um, uh, and nursery areas for the juvenile fish. And also, uh, it gives us the warm, warm climate. Uh, the production of fisheries is five times higher on the eastern side of the Atlantic than the, uh, on the western. So it's a big difference, uh, mainly because of the climate. And also, of course, this is ideal for pan based, net pan based uh, agriculture, as you know. Secondly, we have large areas of intermediate uh, high uh, primary uh, productivity that is then grazed by large uh, zooplankton species of copepods, krill and, uh, and amphipods. Um, so we have efficient food webs in our waters. And then uh, thirdly, we have migratory stocks. These uh, large pelagic stocks that you see here, herring, capelin, mackerel, blue whiting, they move over large areas and feed. And therefore they're some of the world's largest fish stocks. And also we have ground fish on, uh, like cod, safe, uh, on the uh, continental shelves, they also are migratory, exploiting the large areas and the strong seasonality that we have in our areas. So, with this natural or favorable natural uh, uh, conditions, Norway last year became the biggest net seafood uh, exporter, and uh, the wild catch is contributing 43 billion kroner to that. Here we see the development in uh, total catches in the Norwegian and Barents seas. We see that. Uh, it started with a mainly uh, dominance of herring and uh, cod in the early 1900s, and it has uh, in increased a lot as the fisheries in increased and improved their efficiency. It has diversified and has stabilized as our management has also improved. Um, if we look solely at the Norwegian catches, we see that it's been remarkably stable at 2.5 million tons in the last 20 years. But the composition has changed a bit. We see the dominance here of pelagic stocks uh, in the early 2000s. Now that's much less. We got more uh, codfish, we got more shellfish, uh, including uh, Antarctic krill, and also uh, macroalgae. So, um, but this is really just a brief overview of, of the state of affairs. Okay, so how do we manage the, the stocks? And what's the status? Um, we have an ecosystem approach uh, to the fisheries management, and this was formally introduced in Norway in 2009 with the Ocean Resources Act. And what is this? And this has been a kind of a, a concept that is quite difficult to comprehend. I think for, for many of us it was, and then we kind of developed it. This stock assessment and advice is still a very key component to the management. And here in the lower panel, we see a harvest control rule. This is the rule used for uh, the herring the Norwegian spring spawning herring, showing the, um, how we should optimally um, fish the, um, the herring as a function of the spawning stock biomass. And here you see at the low spawning stock biomass, you fish low, 
and then you increase it to the affluence y, the level that gives you the maximal sustainable yield. Up here we see the, the development of the herring stock um, and how it's been developed, the spawning stock biomass. So key concept here, a reference point, is this uh, B limb, which is the, the, the stock size below which we say that the stock has a reduced uh, reproductive uh, capacity. So we, we, we term it red. And because we don't know exactly how big the stock is, we have an uncertainty buffer. So that we try to keep, keep the, the stock above this MSYB trigger, that we have 95% certainty that we're above this critical level. And then above that, we, we harvest it uh, at the maximum level. Um, and then we have it um, uh, green and say that it has full reproductive capacity. And then yellow in between here at increased risk. So the way we calculate the quota is simply taking the last number here and, and then um, using the operational um, um, fishing mortality. If it's green, then you use this level. If it's on the slope, then you use on the slope. And then below in the red, you go down and use this level. So you can see here that you have this B limb here, and you also see it as a horizontal line uh, up, uh, up here. So this is the level we're trying to steer, uh, steer above. Okay, so that was a crash course in fisheries biology. But it's, it's important that this should be much more taught at lower levels in Norway, I think, because it's very important. Okay, and then we have the ecosystem component of this. Um, ecosystem approach, um, and that's really three main goals. It's to protect habitats like corals and uh, sea feathers, things that are exposed to fisheries that we like to conserve. We like to uh, also uh, have um, low bycatch, um, and uh, this is both of juvenile fish and fish, things that are vulnerable to, uh, to fisheries. And uh, this is through uh, allowance of a certain bycatch level and technical regulations and area closures. And then we have ghost fishing, which we really don't want at all. We want to minimize that, and that's a lost fishing gear that is still uh, operating. And then multi-species management, uh, wherever that can uh, be used. And this is really where you have species that are linked through the food web. You can look to see them uh, um, together, like we do with cod and capelin. Or you can also say that we want to set aside a certain uh, level of, or some uh, forage species that are important to, uh, to uh, predator fish, you can set aside, or if they're important to birds, you can also have these kind of broader ecosystem objectives. And then we have the ecosystem-based management, and this is very important now, that we see uh, increased usage of the, of the ocean for offshore wind, offshore aquaculture, for example. So we see, we see this um, in, in this ecosystem-based management, we look at the combined effect of all human activities. And we try to have a, a good coexistence between, uh, between industries. And of course, how you're also going to get the room for 30% protection of the ocean uh, in that. So it's going to be uh, busy uh, trying to figure it out and to get it the most uh, in the best way. Okay, so look a little bit at the status, the overall status of all the stocks. And the Fisheries Directorate, they have uh, this uh, list of uh, goals set for the different stocks. And 117 stocks altogether. And for the commercially most important stocks, uh, the, the goal is to have optimal economic uh, long-term yield, and we have 16 stock in that uh, um, category. And the second category, to have high and, if possible, long-term yield, so these are slightly less important stocks. And then the third level is to secure biodiversity and ecosystem functioning, 60 stocks uh, altogether. And then one is that we want to fish down uh, one stock, and that's uh, Pacific oyster, and then uh, unresolved or not clarified is the king crab. So altogether 117 stocks. So let's use this color coding that we, we learned in the crash course, where what, red, green is full reproductive capacity, uh, yellow is increased risk, and red is reduced uh, reproductive capacity, and then gray is where we don't have enough uh, information to set the status really. If you look at the, those 16 stocks of, um, of commercially most important stocks, we see that 10 stocks are green, five is yellow, and one is red. And that's the cod in the, in the North Sea. That is very much uh, now prone to to uh, climate change. The, the Northeast Arctic cod, the Barents Sea cod, now for the first time in a very long time is in yellow. So that has declined. And as Maria mentioned, that is, the quota advice was, is down 31% for next year. So we're worrying uh, about that, but, but otherwise it's, it's fairly, a fairly good status, I would say. If we look at the category two stocks, we see a lot of those are green. There are four uh, red, including the lobster, and four uh, or three uh, red fish uh, stocks, not, not too important to us. And then a few uh, grays. 
Um, and then if you look at the category three stocks, you, you can't really read this, I, but you can see the colors. Um, so we have still a dominance of green in the ones we can assess, uh, some red and some yellow, but a dominance of gray. And about two thirds of these are gray. And so we're working now on dedicated uh, uh, project at IMR to, to improve the situation and to, to be able to also give a color, uh, preferably green, but the right color to those uh, gray ones, so that we have a full uh, take on all those. Okay, so that was a really quick roundup of uh, the, um, the uh, national uh, stocks of Norway, so let's take this more global uh, perspective then. This figure has uh, been shown, uh, this is the third time today I think, so, so you've seen this, and this is from the, the uh, FAO report uh, that's produced every other year, and you've already seen the, the levels, I'm not going to say a lot about that. It's uh, 80 million ton, it's, it's been like that from the wild catch, um, marine wild catch since the 80s. What's notable uh, here is that this is the first time, you see the, the increase in the aquaculture, and this is the first time aquaculture has a bigger output than fisheries. So this is, uh, this is a, it's a milestone uh, in a way. Okay, it, can we increase it uh, further? Can we get more food and biomass from the sea? And that was the uh, ambition uh, for this report that was given to SAPEA. This is Science Advice for Policy by European Academics. So they went really through into this, this question. In spite of what Maria said and, uh, about this a little bit uh, gloomy outlook uh, in climate change. But they, they looked into the whole issue, both agriculture and fisheries. And if you look at the fisheries uh, side of things, they came up with five options to increase uh, the output from the sea. The first is to improve management of established stocks, and they said that 20 million tons can be gotten uh, here, and that is if you have uh, not so many grey species, but you can actually set the right quota level, then you can actually, for, for much more species, then, then you can actually get uh, 20 million tons more. Reduce discard by more selective fishing, and that means that you leave fish in the sea that you today fish and you put on deck and they cannot be really used for uh, food or anything else. And utilize waste this uh, associated with discards and processing. And this is uh, things that are thrown overboard. We know that that's uh, not so much uh, anymore in Norway, but in many places this is a big problem. And that's a 30 million ton they estimate. And then redirecting reduction fisheries to direct human uh, consumption, another 20 million. So that means that this adds up to 80 million. So, uh, with this uh, perspective, you can actually double uh, the harvest. So at, it's a little bit strange compared to that we've seen at this plateau since the 80s. But there is a potential, clearly. And then uh, what uh, Ingvar is going to talk about next, how can we get more food from the sea, uh, stocks that are not exploited. And there are particularly Antarctic quill, which is exploited a little bit, but it can uh, more, and then mesopelagic stocks. So there is a considerable potential, but it's really hard to realize this, this stuff, I think. You know, that's, that's fair to say. But one should clearly try. And a key concept, of course, it has to be sustainable. And if you look at the sustainability, uh, this is the blue. Um, and back in 74, uh, it was 90% of the stocks uh, were sustainably harvested. Now, we're down to 62%. And it's 2.3% lower than it was in two years ago. So I was, I was, when I read the report last year, I was like, okay, next year, this next report, two years, it's going to change. It didn't. And, and uh, <clears throat> the 77% the of the landings came from sustainably harvested stocks, so slightly better than, uh, than the, the 62%. But still, that's down also 5%. It was 82 so it's clear that there's a lot of work to do here to spread good practices in fisheries management from uh, places like Norway, America, Europe, until developing countries and international waters. So there's, there's a job to do, and it's, uh, it's very important that we, we help out here and, and, and then potentially can realize these, uh, these uh, benefits. Okay, finally, on a slightly brighter note, um, there's a lot of exciting technological uh, developments going on in fisheries and in fishery science, and these are sounders that we've uh, purchased at IMR, and tomorrow morning we're going to start a survey on Sprat in Arangafjord, and this is footage from the last year's trial surveys. So the potential in this technology is really great. It can reduce uh, resource use, emissions, and then in in increase, uh, improve quality. So we're going for this sort of win-win-win scenario. 
I'm going to talk more about this to, at Fosting's uh, target tomorrow afternoon in a session there at 2.30, I think. So please join us there if you're interested in hearing more about that. Thank you.